Early in 2022, I had a blast participating in the Pink Slips Invitational put on by Jay's Diecast Creations. The event is coming back for 2023. It's going to be hosted by Paco of Paco's Diecast Garage. Jay, who created the event, will be the announcer and rolling the dice. Anyhow, this is going to be my build for the event for 2023. I've had it in mind since the event earlier. I wanted to take a Prius and make it into a drag Prius. <laughs> so I take these two castings and slam them together. It's kind of what we're going to be doing here. It ended up being challenging, to say the least. In no small part because of how the dragster there, how the funny car is put together. But first things first, I got to get this Prius apart. <laughs> so there's not a lot to it. You know, I draw out the post, take it apart. The base is obviously going to go. The interior is going to go. I intended for the glass to go as well. But... <laughs> Anyhow, I try fitting it, and obviously the, <laughs> the wheelbase is a little bit different. <laughs> uh, the funny car was longer, obviously, than the Prius. So I cut off the nose of the chassis. I obviously took the body off the chassis of the funny car. All I need is that base. Cut the wheel things off the front uh, and shortened that front end. So once those were off, I checked it out against the Prius. I knew I needed to move the front wheels back. And there was a hump on that uh, base, that chassis. So I had to file that down because I'm going to put an axle tube on top of that and scoot those front wheels back. I didn't have to change the rear wheels, but off camera. I, there's a lot of this build that's off camera because there was a lot of frustrating stuff happening. <laughs> and uh, anyhow, um, I end up drilling through that, that chassis to match where the front post is on the Prius. I use that front post to hold it in place. And so once I drill, and it's on that thick pad so what, that pad I was filing down. So I drilled through that, making the hole. And then I once that was drilled through, then I drilled into the post to mark it to make sure, again, I'm in the right spot. It was dead on, so my measurements actually did work. Lord knows how many times I measured that, to be sure. Um, there, there was a lot of fitting and test fitting and... and resizing of things that went on on this build that obviously I can't show all of that. I did have to countersink uh, the chassis because that screw, I didn't want it to rub on the ground. The front end on this thing, you'll see it in the end, is really low because I put that axle tube on top of the frame because I wanted to drop that down. And truly, it, it, it's exactly where I want it. I did use wheels from the real rider set that they sell, the wheel sets they directly sell. Uh, this was from set four. And uh, I ended up doing it. This is from a short I did recently. I showed a tip where you can just cut off part of an axle tube, glue it, glue it on the end to keep the wheels in place. I needed to do that because if you look at that axle tube, it's ridiculously short. And if I had done it the typical way where you notch that tube, then you slide the axles in, then you glue them in place, there would have been very little axle holding it in place. Now to keep the back end from going too high into the chassis, I tried a variety of things. I ended up cutting the nut in half. And then just to get it in place, I used CA glue. And you'll see me, I have the rear wheels where I want them. And so I'm putting that in the back to keep that chassis from riding up any higher in the frame. I hope that makes sense. Uh, it's just there to block it from going higher. Um, 
I do create some hooks, but those hooks on the back don't let you hinge that top up. They're to keep it located, to keep it centered in the body. It was, it was a little complex on the back end. Um, naturally, this is the first time we're seeing JV Weld here. <clears throat> Excuse me, the nut is in place. You can kind of see it in the back of the chassis. There, I had tacked on the front axle tube where I wanted it with CA glue, and then I just go over it with JB Weld because why not? <laughs> I have JB Weld, why not? And there you see me going around the nut in the back with JB Weld. And I, I put tape on the outside of the casting, the way I like to fill in things like windows. This was a, a Prius taxi of all things. So I end up, I wanted to fill in the back window because this is a funny car and I just wanted that closed off. And obviously I fill in the hole in the roof that was for the taxi light. And there you see that that I'm filling in. This is obviously highly sped up. <laughs> And I do try and smooth the JB Weld out as much as possible, particularly in the areas where the window are going to be. Obviously, I'm cutting the back window off of this, the windshield section on the inside. That back window is disappearing, as is the, I'm going to have to cut the plastic off of the uh, window portion that was the taxi light on top. That was molded into that. In between these JB Weld sec uh, sections of the video, and there you see it after I pulled the tape off. Turned out pretty well. There was a little cavity on the one part of the back window, but it comes out so smooth when you do the tape that way. That's why I do it that way. I really prefer the results, even though you'll see what I do here in a second of that. Tacked in the back axle with CA glue trying to center it. I did not shorten that axle at all from the way Hot Wheels supplies it. I end up tacking it in place. You'll see me pull it down a little bit to center it here in a second. And uh, I do end up going over that with JV Weld later. You see right there that flat back section? That's what butts up against the nut in the back of the body to keep it from going up higher. And you see the front axle, uh, it's in place with the JV Weld as well. Then I take Bondo Spot Putty. And uh, let's just say I put a liberal coat, a liberal skim coat, over the entire top of the car. Basically to smooth out uh, any of those air pockets that were in the JV Weld. There was, there was one little bubble area and... Uh, and then I end up reshaping it a little back there as well with the uh, Bondo Spot Putty. But you'll see I end up sanding virtually all of that off. There's the hooks I made out of paper clips. Those are going to hook around that chassis. You see the openings in the chassis. And those are going to hook in into those openings. And I'm just using those to keep it centered again in the body. So I tack those in place with CA glue again, making sure they're exactly where I want them. I suppose there would have been a way to hinge it if I really could have wrapped my head around it. <laughs> I couldn't. And so I was more than happy just to use those hooks to keep it in place. So once those had cured with the CA glue in place and I knew they were exactly where I wanted them, yep, JB Weld time. <laughs> because I, I almost bought more JB Weld today and I already have more JB Weld than I really should have. But I don't know, I just love this stuff. So that, those obviously aren't going anywhere. And the skim out coat had dried at this point, so I end up sanding off virtually all of it. 
Again, I'm just using it to fill in some areas, fill in the ridges along the roof line, smooth out that back window area. It wasn't quite perfect at this point. So I do hit it with a little bit more Bondo Spot Putty, as you can see there, along the ridges on the side and a couple areas in the back window. And it gets re-sanded again, virtually completely off. Again, this is just smoothing it out a little. So there it is after the primer. I'm pretty happy with it at this point. This went horribly wrong. Very quickly, I was casting a new windshield because I wanted a clear windshield. Up to that point went well, and then it went to crap, <laughs> which did affect some things later. But I was hoping to create a clear windshield. Uh, vacuum forming it did not work at all because of the shape of the windshield and the sides and what I had altered. It was too thin. It, it was funky. There's no other way to describe it. So then I thought I'd cast one in clear resin and making the mold went horribly wrong. The uh, silicone release I tried to use, I guess I didn't apply it liberally enough, ended up with the original windshield with its modifications in the block of rubber <laughs> and you had to cut it out. So we go with the modified windshield. I created a completely custom set of decals for this build in Adobe uh, Illustrator. And uh, at this point, I'm still trying to figure out where I want the decals. I don't show you all of that. I do dip the altered windshield in gauzy. You see tape over portions of the windshield because those are scuffed up a little bit. I wanted to make sure there would be good adhesion between that windshield and the body because it doesn't have the support you typically have with a windshield that's from an original casting with, without any real alterations. There you see it put together. The base is screwed on, the back hooks hold it in place. The decal set's been finished. It's not a great roller, but it rolls. Part of the reason it's not a great roller is because of that damn windshield. There's small parts of it that are rubbing slightly on the front wheels, unfortunately, because I couldn't go with the one I wanted to cast. <laughs> So there it is in a nutshell. There's a lot to that build that I didn't show. And I hope you like where this ends up. There's what I started with. And coming up, it really is how I envisioned it. There's some areas that didn't turn out exactly the way I had planned because of limitations in my skill and things I encountered along the way that were somewhat unplanned. I'm really happy with the decals that I came up with for this. The Pink Slayer seemed like the perfect name for this. A little background on it. Last year, Keith over at Outlaw Speed Shop was in the event. And when he got knocked out, I thought, you know, next year, It'd be great to make one called the Outlaw Slayer and have that go up against him. But I'm not sure he's participating in this year's event. So I decided, yeah, well, the Pink Slayer is pretty damn good. So there's a rising sun on it. There's JDC and Paco's logos. There's my logos. There's Toyota Racing on there. There's the remember kids, electricity will kill you on the top because it's a Prius. So uh, I hope you enjoy this build. I had a blast doing it. I'm gonna be sending it off, assuming it gets through tech inspection. And uh, be sure and check out the description of the video. It has links to Jay's page and Paco's Diecast Garage, who again will be hosting the event. Be sure to check there for all updates on the event, and uh, hopefully you'll be cheering me on. Thanks for watching. Everybody stay safe and healthy out there. Catch you in the next one.